Hey, it's Chris. Nice to have you back again. Welcome to a new episode of the Astro Tutorial series. Today I want to talk about the connection between types of imaging the night sky, focal length, exposure times and tracking methods. I mean, fundamentally we can distinguish two kinds of photography. One is the daylight or earthbound photography. We take images of objects within our own reference frame, and normally those objects are steady relative to us, so the exposure time of an image taken can vary and fit our requirements and needs. If you want to take a bright image of your dark garden, you simply increase the exposure time until you collect enough light for your image. I mean, yeah, I do oversimplify things here. On the other hand, we have the photography of the night sky, where we have a moving reference frame. It seems to us that the sky and every star inside is seemingly moving. Truth told, the opposite is true. The Earth rotates around a central axis, and because we are moving with the Earth, the sky is seemingly moving relative to us standing still. Because the Earth rotates around one rotational axis, we see things as if the sky rotates around one central point in the sky. All stars seem to rotate around this central point and we call this point Northern or Southern Celestial Pole and for us in the North it's quite directly but not exactly next to Polaris, the North Star, hence the name. So whatever, if we then take an image of the night sky, we want to increase the exposure time as long as possible because the night sky is quite uh, dark, I mean <laughs> it's night time, you know. Taking exposures of several seconds or even minutes will reveal the movement of the sky. Stars will inevitably trail. The underlying concept is thereby quite simple. Stars move in position relative to us and their position on the camera sensor will change too, because the camera remains steady. And given the symmetry of the system, the star trails will form circles. After 24 hours to be precise, because that's the duration of one rotation of the Earth. <laughs> you guessed it, right? Whatever. Those star trail images are quite pretty and a distinct form of nighttime photography on their own, though nothing I do quite often. But maybe we do want to take images of the night sky but without trailing stars, don't we? If so, we need to restrict the exposure time. For a given exposure, the star's image on the sensor must not move such far that it covers more than one pixel in the final image. And obviously this depends on the focal length of your optical system, or your achieved field of view and the pixel size of our sensor. Whatever, that would be way too complicated. And we need a simple thumb rule for that, a quick and dirty approximation. The F500 rule. If you want to create a star trail free image, just divide 500 by the focal length of your system and you get the seconds of maximum exposure time. Let's see some examples. Take, say, a 50mm kit lens, divide 500 by 50 equals 10, so you can take 10 seconds exposures without star trails. Ok, and now take a 150mm Taylor lens and divide 500 by 150 equals roughly 3.3 seconds of exposure time. But always keep in mind, the F500 rule is just an approximation and is also derived from a full frame sensor. If you use a cropped sensor, you need to multiply the focal length with a certain factor. That's for example 1.4 for Canon Ace PC cameras or 2 for Micro Four Thirds cameras, etc. etc. So taking an image with an Olympus Micro Four Thirds at 200mm focal length will give you 500 divided by 200 times 2 equals 500 divided by 400 equals a bit more than one second of exposure time without dealing with star trails, and so on and so forth. Though in one single second, and because it's night time, you can't gather much light for your image, so what do you do? Use stack images. Take multiple images of one second, each without star trails, and then layer them on top of each other with certain software. The process is very simple and the result is much more rich in detail. What stacking exactly is? We will have a closer look in an upcoming episode, ok? So staying with the F500 rule, we are left with the short focal lengths, as they give us longer exposures in exchange. This is the field of wide field astrophotography. And just to be clear, you can resolve a lot of mysteries of the night sky just using a sturdy tripod and a short lens and a big aperture. Beautiful Milky Way shots, 
white star fields, nebula in the night sky, there's much to see. Dylan actually did a cool tutorial video about the F500 rule too, I'll put the link above. But if you want to increase the focal length to resolve more details of smaller objects, then you either need to shorten the exposure length, or you need to reduce or stop the movement of stars. Wait, what? No, I mean the relative motion of the stars, relative at least to our sensor. In order to do so, we need to rotate the camera in such a way that it more or less contracts the Earth's rotation. This method is called tracking. The mount, mostly motorized our days, is precisely aligned along the rotational axis of the Earth, pointing at the celestial pole from our perspective. And this alignment is called polar alignment and then the mount rotates with the same speed like Earth, one rotation every 24 hours, and that's called tracking. And with such a tracking mount you can increase the maximum exposure time a lot. The simple rule here, the more precise the tracking is, the sturdier the mount is, the longer the exposures can be for a given focal length. And for cameras with common DSLR lenses there are portable tracking mounts for your tripod available. With these small mounts you can easily take one or two minute subs of wide sections of the night sky, and you can produce very sweet images with that. The key here is to use some lenses with a low f-ratio. Remember, the lower the f-ratio, the faster the system and the less time you need to grab the same amount of data for the image. Other way around, the higher the focal length, the more precise the tracking must be. And I mean, sometimes we talk about over a meter of focal length with exposures over 15 minutes. I mean, it's crazy. Using the F500 rule with a full frame sensor, we conclude 500 divided by 1000 millimeter focal length equals only half a second of exposure time. And then compare this to 15 minutes or 900 seconds of exposure time. We just increased then the exposure time by a factor of 1800 that calls for real precision. Using those advanced tracking mounts we can enter the range of deep sky object photography or DSO. And we will stick to this very topic for nearly the rest of this tutorial, because this niche is my very niche. So that's it for the day. Next episode we will discover different mount types that can track the night sky and how they work. One will be quite familiar and one quite uh, unintuitive first, but highly necessary in the long run. You will see. I do hope that you could take some ideas of the different categories of night sky photography and what every subcategory requires. A tripod and long exposures for star trail images. Tripod and the F500 rule for wide field astrophotography, using multiple exposures to increase the details in the final image. Smaller and motorized travel mounts with tracking for short scopes or DSLRs, taking exposures of round about one minute or the big motorized mounts with polar alignment and high precision tracking for long and deep sky exposures, hunting galaxies and find and distant nebula. So stay tuned and we will continue our road towards the night sky. And if you like this video and don't want to miss the mount types, then click like and subscribe. But more importantly, spread this amazing hobby, lead newcomers here, maybe these videos are of any help. So thanks for joining me and as always I say clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.